As most of you know, right now we're in a vaccination period where many Canadians are getting their first dose of the vaccines and there are people all over the world who have been almost completely vaccinated. COVID-19 has been in all of our minds since the beginning of 2020. But there's actually another pandemic that often gets overlooked that has been prevalent for a long time, and that is the anxiety pandemic. COVID-19, our fears, worries, and anxiety have been weighing us down mentally, and sometimes these can even hurt us more than physical pain. But there is hope. Just like how we have a cure for COVID, we have a cure for Kavale. With this in mind, let us now begin worship, and I would like to encourage every one of you to join in as we read Psalm 100, a psalm for giving grateful praise. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. As we heard in Psalm 100, let's enter his gates with thanksgiving and praise, and let's rejoice together as a community of believers for the joy of Jesus. Let's all sing these classics together.
So before we begin the opening prayer, I would like each one of you to think of one or more things in your life that you're currently worried about or scared or anxious about. And then we'll have a minute of silence, surrendering all of them to God, allowing him to reach out to you at your point of need, helping you, caring you, and giving you his peace. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for making it possible for all of us to come together today in this service to worship, praise, and glorify you. Anxiety and fear down a long time in our lives and sometimes it feels as if there isn't a break and we're constantly living in fear but today we surrender all our voice to you god and we invite you into our, our lives removing the pain and fear in the lives of every single person in this service and everyone listening filling us with your strength your joy peace hope and your love instead of living in fear help us to live in faith and trust in you god and your plan to deliver us from the pain and lead us into better days you, God, are almighty, all-powerful, and will never leave us. And with you by our side, help us to not be worried anymore, but to rejoice in you, give thanks, and praise you every day. As we listen to your word today, we ask you to guide us through the Holy Spirit, allowing your word to resonate in us. Help everyone taking part in today's youth-led service to worship and serve you with zeal and passion. Bless us all today, and we ask this in your almighty, precious name. Amen. Job lost everything. He lost everything known to him, but he still praised God through it all. Will we be like Job, praising God no matter what the circumstances are, no matter what we lose, no matter what he takes away? Let's all sing this song together, Blessed Be Your Name, as we praise God and make that promise to praise him no matter what stands in our way. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, where your streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place, though my walk. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name. Lord, 
We worry about so many things, debt, safety, time, money, our children, our health. Sometimes we even worry about how much we worry. We worry so much that we can't sleep at night. Do you know what I'm talking about? In Luke 10, Jesus visits the house of Mary and Martha. And while Mary was sitting at the feet of Jesus, listening to him talk, Martha was in the kitchen doing all the preparations. And Martha began to get worried because she was stuck doing everything herself. And so she came and complained to Jesus. Verse 40 says, She came up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the serving alone? Then tell her to help me. But the Lord answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and bothered about so many things, but only one thing is necessary. For Mary has chosen the good part, which shall not be taken away from her. Jesus tells Martha, only one thing is necessary. When we are overcome with worry, we have done what Martha did. We've forgotten the one thing, sitting at the feet of Jesus. But we so often put our trust in other things, that when they don't work out the way we want them to, we start to worry. And we become afraid because we're so focused on our own agenda. And when something gets off track, we can't handle it because we've lost control. But the real problem is not that we've lost control, but that we have forgotten that we were never meant to be in control in the first place. In John 14, 1, Jesus says, Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. When we wait in the presence of the Lord and hand control over to him and say, Lord, your plans be accomplished, not mine, he reminds us that his plans have not faltered. When you put your trust in God, he will take care of you when you can't take care of yourself. Psalms 127, 2b says, For he gives to his beloved, even in his sleep. That means if you're trusting in God, when you're asleep, he's up working to make sure you're well taken care of. One time I was praying and seeking God about an important decision because I felt like he was leading me to start working for myself, doing contract work. And I was praying and saying, God, I don't feel like I'm going to be able to provide for my family. I don't feel like I'm going to be able to do this. But in my spirit, I knew that God was telling me, don't worry, I've got it. And so I got down on my knees and I said, God, you're in control. You're our provider. I'm going to trust you with this. And the very next day after I said that, I got a phone call with someone offering enough contract work to keep me going. And I knew that it wasn't anything that I had done. It was God. Another time, I found myself burdened by the amount of work that I was having to do. I was working late hours because I was worried that if I didn't work enough, I wouldn't be able to provide for my family. And so I came before God and said, God, I'm tired. I'm working all the time. I don't know what to do. And God said to me, stop working. I've got it. And I said, stop working. I can't do that or else there won't be enough. I won't be able to provide. But God again said, stop working, I've got it. And so I took off work an hour early that day. And as soon as I took work off, I went outside and I checked the mail. And in the mailbox was a random check for $500 that I could never have predicted. And I knew that it was God that was providing for us. I'm not telling you that God doesn't want you to work. I'm telling you he doesn't want you to worry. Jesus reminds us of the most important thing. And if you will begin to seek this one thing first, you will see your problems from his perspective and not your own. I bet if an all-powerful, loving God looked down at the issues in your life, he would say, this is what all the fuss is about? 
Really? I can handle that. Don't worry. Isaiah 40, 31a says, Yet those who wait for the Lord will gain new strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles.
taken from Matthew chapter 6 verses 25 to 34 therefore I tell you do not worry about your life what you will eat or drink or about your body what you will wear is not life more than food and the body more than clothes look at the birds of the air they do not sow or reap or store away in barns and yet your heavenly father feeds them are you not much more valuable than they can any one of you be worrying at a single hour to your life and why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet, I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all of these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Here ends the reading. Alright, so before we get to the intercessory prayer, I just want to talk about a few things that's been uh, going on around the world. As you probably know, there's a war breaking out in Palestine, Israel right now. You know, there's no peace there. There is just conflict and violence that's taking place there. The COVID situation in India and Sri Lanka are getting worse. And as I go into my prayer right now, I pray that not just for you to listen and really take in what I'm saying, but for you to keep them in your prayers too. Because no matter how bad we have it here in Canada with the COVID situation, there are things around the world that are so much worse. And there's so many people that have less than us. So I just pray that you keep them in your prayers as well. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us together, Lord. Thank you for bringing us as a congregation to just learn more about your word, Lord, to praise and glorify your name together, Father God. During these times, it's sometimes hard to stay positive. Sometimes doubt can enter our minds. But these are the time where we should let our faith shine through, Lord, to use your strength to hold on to our faith when sometimes we don't see hope around us, when all we see is darkness and we can't see the light at the end of the tunnel. I pray, Lord, that you be with the COVID situation in India, in India and Sri Lanka, Lord. I pray, God, that you strengthen them, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you bring them with the courage and the strength to get through these situations for the families and individuals that are suffering right now, Lord. May you bring them peace, Lord. I pray for the war in Palestine and Israel right now. I pray, Lord, that you bless them with peace to not solve their conflict with violence, Lord, to know that there's a better, better way to get through this, Lord. For the families and individuals that have lost their lives, Father God, I pray, Lord, that you be with their families, Lord. I pray, Lord, for the various ministries in our church, Lord. I pray, God, that you be with the leaders to help bring positive positivity and to just be the best leaders that they can be. So not just that the church can grow, but the church can have a bright future as well. I pray, Lord, for Mrs. Beatle's family, Lord, as she went to be with the Lord this morning. I pray, Lord, that you be with her family, Lord. May you bring 
peace and healing to the family, Lord, to get through this tough time, Father God. And I just pray, Lord, that you continue to be with each and every one of us, Lord, no matter how dark things get. I pray, Lord, that we can all see the light at the end of the tunnel, Lord. We pray this in your almighty and precious name we pray. Amen. Hello? Hello? Hi, Amama. Did you log in for our TCCC service today? Ayyo, no! Oru nuda pass koda vachu, eda kashta padutranga. Um, well, I see you on the screen, so I guess it worked out. Um, anyway, how are you doing today, Amama? Naan paravala. In the Zoom, in the Zoom service, church mari varadu. Church landa, in a friend's order, kadiklam. Coffee, kudiklam. And the short seat, short eats him, sopadlam. Anna, you put the corona, and the corona van the dollar, undu me, say you mudiadu. Be yarum, in a pocket little. I know, I know. It's been like that for a while. Um, how, how's your brother? Amma told me that he's doing better. Better, oh. Better, oh. I want to get a cast to cut under the crown. So I cast the bongi and the, and the patty sim and the mutton roll sim. Bongi, stop it under the crown. Oh, uh, well, that's unfortunate, I guess. We should just be happy that patties and mutton rolls make him happy. Um, what about you? What have you been eating lately? Doctor told you to watch cholesterol, right? Oh, yes, yes. I think I remember that cholesterol. You know, even if I forget, your mama will be on your back, be on my back. You know, Pula? Morning, noon, and night, I have been eating that soup. Oh, my dear. If only I could eat some. What is that called? That, that, that small? Oh, that, that Big Mac. But your mama, your mama is so strict. She even told that security guard not to let me out. Naan in the Mirugama in the Vitla Adinjirkutku. Amama, she just wants you to be safe. You're so high risk for this virus. So we just want to make sure that you're not walking into fast food restaurants asking to get sick. நீங்களுக்கு <laughs> Pilla, pilla. Next weekend, oh. Next weekend, I'll go to the next weekend. The vaccine is not my life burned down. I don't have to worry about it. I mean, even if you get the vaccine... Pfizer, Pfizer. Right, um, even after you get the Pfizer vaccine, we'll still be in lockdown. What do you say? I'll tell you what I'm saying. I don't know. If you get the Pfizer vaccine, Well, Amama, I'm not so sure that a single vaccine... Pfizer. 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 Sorry. I'm not so sure that a single or double dose of Pfizer would truly comfort you. I'm sorry you feel this way, but honestly, have you told God about your worries? Vissare! Naan, over Sunday, jabi polar kundu, pray pandanaan. Oh, that's great. But do you ever talk to God by yourself and tell him how you feel? Feeling so. If you feel so, you can't do a miracle. Can you go to the problem? Well, God definitely didn't say he'd magically take away all your problems, which it sounds like you have a bunch of. Uh, instead, we have to not be anxious about anything. You know, even if you're living alone, even if your brother overeats mutton rolls, and even if you never got the Pfizer vaccine, the smartest thing to do when you feel like this is to pray and present your requests to God. It'll really give you peace and change how you feel. Wait, how can prayer change how I feel? You know what? I've had so many prayers in my life. 
but you know, I always feel anxious and stressed. Uh, are you praying, Amama, or are you just getting Pastor Jebby to pray? But no, he's a pastor now, so God will listen to his prayers. Amama, if you were a beggar on the street, God would still listen to your prayers. It's about voicing your troubles and allowing his peace to guard your heart. Sorry, Pulev, Konjam Blangudu. So, should I just uh, talk to God about my problems and tell him how I feel? Yes, 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 for sure. And don't worry so much about getting your Pfizer vaccine because while it may protect you from COVID 19, it won't fix all your problems. God is the only cure for all your needs, but you have to allow his peace to transcend your understanding. Hey, and before you know it, you'll be rejoicing in the Lord, even in the midst of all these problems. Hmm, sorry, sorry, Pala. You know what? I will try. Man, let you know. <laughs> okay, Amama. Bye. Enjoy the service. Bye, Pala. Tata. Good afternoon, everyone. It's uh, great to see you all once again on a Sunday afternoon to worship together virtually. அவர்களுக்கு <laughs> We have many anxieties. Um, one of the words uh, that we've been hearing over the last year, this year, is that word pandemic. Uh, I would say it's the word of the year. I mean, yes, COVID is a word that I think everyone knows. But this word pandemic, not many of us knew this word pandemic before. And suddenly, even a little child knows this word pandemic. But as Ashwin mentioned right at the beginning, we're talking about COVID pandemic, but there is a pandemic that has been in existence from the day, you know, man took life into his own hands. From the day man disobeyed God. And that's why there are many passages of scriptures that talk about, do not worry, do not be anxious. Even though there are many passages that talk about, don't worry, don't be anxious. How many of us can truly say that we don't worry? How many of us can confidently say that, you know what, I'm, I'm a carefree person. I don't worry about anything. I'm not anxious about anything. I think we all fall into that trap of being anxious, worrying. And right now, as much as we're talking about the pandemic, another hot topic is vaccination. You know, we're checking on each other. Have you been vaccinated? Like, you know, Grandma Shalika saying, I only want Pfizer. There's concerns about Pfizer, AstraZeneca. You know, there are various concerns about the various vaccines. You know, that's another topic. And around the globe, this is what people are talking about. How can we bring an end to this pandemic? And yes, as Tiana mentioned in that skit, by Get, whether it's uh, Pfizer or uh, AstraZeneca or Madonna, whatever it may be, is not going to resolve the matter. And there is no quick fix. And this evening, we're going to look at what is the vaccine or what is the antidote for anxiety. And we're going to be looking at this passage that was uh, you know, uh, shown to us in the form of a skit. And Paul is writing to the church in Philippi. And I'm sure we all know the context when Paul wrote this. Paul was not, you know, experiencing a great time in his life. He was actually in a Roman prison. And actually, while he was there that he wrote this passage, a well-known passage, I'm sure we have all read, heard uh, sermons many times. And the songs that we even heard today, Rejoice in the Lord Always. And again, I say rejoice. These are some of the songs that we heard when we were little kids. But in reality, are we able to rejoice? 
Let me read this passage in English and in Tamil. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Katharukul apolidum sandoshamayirangal. Sandoshamayirangal endu marupadiyam solukirin. Ungal sandakudam illa amidirikkum terimdirpadaha. Katar samibamayirikirat. Ningal londrukkum kavalipadamal. Illa avachayin kurikkumal vindapangalai stotra tore kodiya jabatthi nalam. Vindadali nalam. Dhevanikku thiriya patthingal. Apolidu. Yella putikum melana devasamadana, umal irriviangalim, umal sindialim, crease the esu kilaha katakolo. The Nali Nangal party in Abraham Apirahar Maha. Nanga Jubam and a Kurum Pole the Nanga or a Kilipule Pole and Angal Jubangali Nangal say the one in control. We have been doing prayer with a monotonous, but prayer is actually a conversation with God. And this is what Paul is saying when we give over our anxiety by in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, there is a promise that God will guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. The peace of God will guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So there's a part, we're in a covenantal relationship. It is both ways. It's not one way. We expect things to just fall into our laps. And like we saw in that skit, you know, it is our responsibility to take our worries, to bring, take our anxieties to God in prayer, in conversation to God in prayer. So this evening, let me look at what are some of the causes of anxiety. There are many causes of anxiety. Um, in the anxiety and the padatikka tamalile kavaliyad than deyadavanthilirikkanda, but I was trying to look for a better word like for anxiety because um, worry is nanga kavaliyad kulla. I mean, anxiety is more ulla vaathindu or kavale. Uh, there are many things, but I just want to leave three things. First, worries of this life. In the Valki Kavali Hill, anxiety kula hangle amal thindra thindra. Now the worldly pleasures. In the Ulahatin Sitring Bangal, Munda the waiting for an answer to prayer. Uh, last week we heard uh, Mrs. Xavier share God's word, and she spoke about Hannah. You know, she was distressed because she was waiting on God for an answer. She was waiting on God for a child. So she was distressed. So even in our lives, when, when we're in the waiting lodge, when we're waiting for something to be fulfilled in our lives, there is anxiety because we don't know what's going to happen. So waiting for an answer to prayer can also cause us anxiety. But let me quick, uh, very briefly look at what are the worries of this life? What are the worldly pleasures? What is waiting for an answer to prayer means? So we heard this passage read by Sherad, a passage that we see in Matthew chapter 6, right after Jesus taught his disciples the Lord's Prayer. You know, when Jesus, I mean, his disciple asked, how should we pray? He did not give them techniques or skills, but he showed them, you know, the way to converse with God the Father. So here we see in this passage, Jesus is actually telling his disciples, do not worry about your life. Do not worry about what we drink, what you, what you're, about your body, about what you will wear. And he's making it very clear again and again. The word worry is repeated many times. But let me look at it in the, in the Tamil version. Now, He's mentioning how, I mean, we are so special. And he goes on to mention by worrying, who's going to add? 
Maybe God is asking that question to all of us this evening. Kavali Padigradinal, Wali Urban then said a lot of Murate Kutua. Uday Kahavam Ningal Kavali Padigradina. Cart the Pushpangal, a pretty valid than the Kavani to Parangal. I will look at the Mille, no Kurimile Yundralam, Salamon Mudalite, and Sarva Mahimil, I will Lundre Pola Hiram, Uruthir in the day and Rumulka Solhendre. At Pavisavasile, Indrekir in the Naliki, Adipile, Podapur, and Cart to Puluka Durban, Yipi the Mahud to Ital, Umulkur Tripad, Adianichamelava. Ah, yal, Yenateumbo, Menate Kuripom and Udupom and Kavale Pada Dringal. Ivehel Elam, Anyani Hel Nadi Thirdigrahel. In English, it says that pagans, for the pagans run after all these things. So today, let me ask you a question Are you a pagan or are you a child of God? In the Nali and Nanwal, the Kirkavin, the Kirkavinical Anyani, I love the Dermot de Pilia. Kurda and a Burli Lingal or Anyani like Polatan, Nangalam said Padagandro. Dervade Vasanam Kuru and other Anyani Hertan Nadi Thirdigra Helendra Ive Yelelam Ungalaka Verdi Avalendra Paramapida and the Kra. We have a Heavenly Father who knows our needs. But unfortunately, we strive and we are in control of our lives so much that we are, unab are unable to experience God's provision in our life. And as a result, we feel anxious. We're living in a world where we're constantly worried about what's, what's next. But here the word of God is very clear. So it's only pagans who react and respond in that way. But instead, God is reminding all of us what we should do. In the Nalilam, Urkari te devrang le nyaba pertirat. Mudala with the devrudi rachit theim. Avrudi nidiim theringal apur the behalo mulku pura korku padam. Ana nagle ne sehin drom. Devrudi rachit theim avrudi nidiim third dele ke palnara ha. Nagle ne sehin drom. Avar kuru ganar yaab mulku pura korku padam. Ne nagar pura kurka padal eita nagar mudala with third sehin drom. Devrudi rachit the nagar third mara devrudi sehin drom. Ahya nali ka ha kavale padal Nadiatinam, Tanu de Vilika, Kavalipadam, and then the Nalika Dinadin Padapodam. Here God is reminding his disciples, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. All these things. But what do we do? We seek all the things and then we seek God. The formula is you first seek God and his kingdom, his righteousness. All of it will be provided. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble on its, of its own. If you notice just in this you know, few verses, in verse 25, Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about life. In verse 27, he says, And which of you by being anxious can add one cubit to his span of life? In verse 31, Therefore, do not be anxious. In verse 6, 34, it says, in chapter 6, verse 34, therefore do not be anxious about tomorrow. So can you see God is emphasizing on that word anxiety, anxiety again and again. And, I, and it's a choice that you and I, we need to make. And it's a choice that no one else can make except you. And that's why he's saying, do not be anxious. Do not be anxious. And he's calling us to make the choice. So the worries of this, you know, life. And we are constantly worrying about what if this happens? Let me share you a story. There was a lady who was always worried that there will be a burglary or there will be a thief that will enter their house and steal uh, you know, their valuables. So she was living with that anxiety. She was living with that worry. Every single day she was worried about it. So her husband was finding it very difficult because you know, she was so anxious about it. And one fine day, suddenly they heard this loud noise. And downstairs, they realized the thief had got into their house. And the husband went down and he said, you know, you need to meet my wife because she has been an anxious all her life that there would be a robbery. And today you have come at last. You know, sometimes, and you know, that the, the thief will come and steal and it will go uh, uh, um, and it will finish off on a, and one day. But anxiety will kill us forever and ever. It will be in us and it will kill us, not just for a day or two, but even 
all our lifetime. What is that what if? You know, all of us, we have that anxiety. What if this happens? Maybe you're thinking, what if I contract the new variant? Or maybe what if, you know, I'm diagnosed with cancer? What if I lose my job? What if something happens to my child? I want you to fill the blanks. What is that is bothering you? At the same time, think about it. What if actually it happens, even if it happens? Is it going to make any difference? The word of God is very clear. It's not going to add to our life. It's not going to add to our lifespan. It's not going to make any difference. So the enemy has taken hold of our lives and he has, we have lost peace because we have given into anxiety. Anxiety is when our mind is divided, when our mind is not set on Christ and when it is divided and we have given our mind over to the enemy. We are in that place where we are anxious about everything. So this evening, I would like to ask you, what is that thing that you're worried about? What is that one thing, or maybe more than one thing? Maybe you should write down. Maybe you should give that over to God. What is that what if? And maybe you need to also process, even if that happens, how often do we really con converse with God? Or is it just a prayer? Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for the food. Thank you for my family. Thank you for my you know, work. You know, that's what we have been taught and, you know, that's what we have been praying for. But real prayer is when we can process our feelings with God so that God can come into that space, fill us with his peace and encourage and strengthen us. And that's why Psalms is a beautiful book that talks about King David being real with his life with God. You know, his life was with, filled with many ups and downs, but he took time to process it with God. You know, he did not have phone back in those days. But what do we do? The first thing is when we hear bad news or when we are worried is we run to the phone. We are so comfortable talking to, you know, this, uh, like we heard in that skit. It's so easy for us to call Pastor Evie and say, Father, please pray for me. We got so used to taking our phone and talking to someone instead of going to the phone. How often do we go run to the throne? where we can actually find that strength that we need. So the, the second thing is the pleasures of this world, worldly pleasures. When Jesus was talking about the parable of the sower, in Luke chapter 8, we see, and as for what fell among the thorns, they are those who hear, but as they go on their way, they are choked by the cares and riches and pleasures of life. And their fruit does not mature. முள்ளிடங்களின் This signifies us individually. We're living in a world where we are absorbed by a lot of things that's happening around us. And the world is constantly calling us to think like the world, to act like the world. So there's constantly, you know, there's always, um, you know, ways that, you know, it's uh, 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 distracting us. So what happens is when we are in Christ, we are meant to be separated from the world. We are meant to be different. But then the world absorbs us into its mold. And then like this sponge, like, you know, all of us, when we are in this world, eventually this world is going to absorb us. The cares, the riches, the pleasures of life. It's what's absorbing and eventually that is causing anxiety. So if I leave this sponge inside this water, it'll, it's going to turn into green. And that's how it is. 
you know, we have been conformed to the patterns of this world. And when we are conformed to the pattern of this world, we are unable to experience God even communicating. And that's why in Romans 12 verse 1 says, you know, do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, patterns of this world. So we got so used to doing things like the world is calling us to. Our default mode is immediately doing what the world is calling us to. We think like the world. We act like the world. And then when we are anxious, when we are worried, when we are in a mess, then we blame God. That is another reason why we you know, fall into anxiety, cares and riches and pleasures of life. Today, what are some of the cares and riches and pleasures of life that's causing you anxiety? Ask yourself. In the Nalin, Ningal word and Kurt, Ningal Kurt Kolinga, in the Pirabanji Kuria Kavali Hill, Ice Wearing a Citrin Mangal, Ungali Meriki, Kavali Kula Kindra. What is that is causing you anxiety? And then when we are waiting for an answer, when we're waiting for an unanswered prayer, we're anxious. But whom are we waiting on? As Isaiah 40, 31 says, even youths shall faint and be weary and young men shall fall, exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength and they shall mount up with wings like eagles and they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. In the Nalilam, maybe you're waiting for something for many years and you feel like giving up. But the word of God is promising that if we wait for the Lord, he will renew our strength. But what do we do? Instead of waiting, we have lost the art of waiting on God. That's why we are unable to mount up with wings like eagles. But the word of God is promising us. If we wait for the Lord, we will mount up with wings like eagles. And if you do a study about eagles, eagles always saw above the storm, not below the storm. That is what God wants us. Yes, we will face storms. Yes, we will face crisis. But we can fly above the storm because we wait on the Lord. So what is that prayer that you're waiting for on God for? And you're worried about? You're anxious about? Are you waiting for the Lord? So this evening, I just want to leave three things with you. The first thing is always rejoice. You know, Paul uses the Greek word for joy and rejoicing 16 times in only 104 verses. And yet he writes from a dingy Roman prison, a place we would typically associate with misery and trial. You know, Paul was in that prison. It seems like we are also in a prison right now because of the lockdown. But in the midst of it, Paul was able to experience joy. He's surrounded by every conceivable obstacle to joy. So why does he seem so joyful? The reason why he was joyful was because his joy did not come based on the happenings. I've mentioned this before as well. Happiness depends on happenings, but joy depends on Jesus. When things go the way we want, let's say you get a promotion, you get you marry the person you want to, you have a baby, you, you know, you buy the house you want, you know, things are going well, you feel happy and excited. But when things don't go the way you want, can you still experience joy? That is joy that Paul is talking about. And he says, rejoice in the Lord. He's not talking about rejoicing outside, but in the Lord. Nehemiah was able to say, the joy of the Lord is my strength. How many of us can truly say today that I am able to experience the joy despite my circumstances? Whether or not our circumstances are favorable, can we still experience joy? And that comes from Jesus. So if you can, if you're not waking up each morning without excitement in life, maybe we're trying to find that elsewhere. We're dependent somewhere else 
to fill our lives with that joy, the happiness. Joy can come only from Jesus. And that is outside of our circumstances. Paul was inside the prison and still he was able to rejoice. And he writes his letter to the church in Philippi. How can someone write when you're, when you're not sure about what tomorrow holds? He knew where he was and who he was. And this evening, maybe we need to also examine ourselves and ask, where am I in this journey? Am I in Christ or am I out? Paul reminds the church in Philippi to rejoice in the Lord again. And I say rejoice. So one of the ways that we can fight anxiety is by experiencing joy that comes from Jesus. Paul experienced it. And because of that, he was able to face his uh, circumstances boldly without worrying about what tomorrow holds for him or what tomorrow held for him. And today we too can move and march forward into whatever the uncertainties that we are facing right now. If we are dependent on Jesus, instead of depending on his creation, where we depend on Jesus. Secondly, acknowledge his presence. We see in this uh, passage where Paul is talking about um, let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. In some versions it says, the Lord is at near. How many of us can say that he is at hand? He is with me. And Isaiah reminds again and again, you know, he is with us. When we go through famine, when we go through flood, when we go through fire, he is with us. Can you acknowledge his presence in your life? If you truly acknowledge his presence in your life, no matter what life holds for you, you can truly experience his joy, which is the answer for anxiety, answer for our worries. What is blocking you from experiencing his presence? Do you acknowledge his presence? Do you experience his presence in your life? We've got so used to being dependent on others and then we forget that he is there for us. He's at hand. He's near. Allow God to act. You know, our lives have been so in control. We have been in so we have been in control of our lives that we find it hard for God to act. We have already planned our lives. One of the things, I think one of the lessons that we have all learned as a result of, you know, COVID is that we can't make any plans. Whether it's holiday plans, wedding, parties, gatherings, whatever it may be. We cannot make any plans. Because we do not know what tomorrow holds for us. We do not know whether there's going to be a travel ban. We do not know whether the numbers are going to increase. We do not know whether there's going to be a stay-at-home order. We cannot plan. You know, we have been in control. You know, as human beings, we usually plan so well ahead. And, uh, well ahead. Whether it's uh, holidays or whatever it may be. Usually even like a year ahead, two years ahead. So you like, like, God is taking us back to the original place. We are called to depend on him for the day. Because we have been in control of our lives, as human beings, we are limited in how we can be in control of our lives. So that's when we, things don't go the way we want. We are unable to sleep. We're struggling to sleep. We're up all night. We're worried about what, how am I going to handle this situation? 
A, we may be doing something that God maybe have, may, uh, we have, maybe we are doing something that God has told us not to do. Or maybe we're trying to do it in our own strength. So where is the whole trusting in, our, trusting in the Lord with all our strength, all our might, with all our soul? Where does that come? We have forgotten the art of allowing God to act. We know these scripts of, scripture verses, but in reality, we don't allow God to act. We don't allow God to fight our battles. And here we see, do not be anxious about anything. It's a choice that we need to make. But instead, Paul is reminding the church to turn our anxiety to prayer and supplication with thanksgiving and let your requests be known to God. Let your requests be known to God. You may be saying God already knows, but that's where the whole conversation comes in, where you are telling your heavenly father. And when you process it, when you give it over to him, there is a promise. And that promise is that peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. It will guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. So this evening, are you experiencing that peace that guards our hearts and minds? If, if, you're, if you're not experiencing, maybe you need to take your anxiety, your worries, everything that's bothering by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. And let your request be known to God. So this evening, God is calling us to let go and let God take over. What is that area that you are struggling to let go? What is that area that God is reminding you to let go? You have been in control of your life for so long. And nothing is working because you have been in control. You have already pre-planned your life. You have already designed your life. You have already decided this is how I want things to be. And then you're anxious. You're worried. And when things are not going the way you want, you're blaming God. Maybe you need to make the choice to let go and allow the consultant to take over. He can handle it. We cannot handle it because we are human beings. We're limited. He's unlimited. Will you allow God to take over? What is that in your life that you need to let go this evening? Will you make that choice? What is that you're worried about this evening? Will you let go and let God take over? Anxiety undermines God's ability to act. By you being anxious, you are basically saying, you know what, God? I don't think you can handle this. You're basically saying, God, I don't think you have the ability to act. Anxiety undermines God's ability to act. Will you make the choice this evening to let go, to give over your anxiety to God so that he can act? But instead, attach to God. Attachment to God uplifts our anxiety. Who are you attached to? Where is your attachment? We are attached to humans so much. We're dependent on human relationship. We're attached to our works. We're attached to the things that we have. And that's not going to give us peace. It's only going to add more worry. But if you attach to God, God will uplift our anxieties. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 19 says, we have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. Do you have this hope? Do you have this anchor for the soul that is firm and secure? Where is your anchor this evening? We need to go through storm in order to experience whether our anchor is in the right place. Is your anchor where it's meant to be? The word of God is promising us that we have this hope as an anchor for our soul. Firm and secure. Firm and secure. Nanguram. Ummaradavalki nanguram. In the nalilam edavahirikindada. Always rejoice. Sapuradam kalihurgal. Acknowledge his presence. Avradi presenate yetrukulagal. I love God. To act. Will you make the choice? This evening. Let me ask you that question. What is 
weighing you down. I'm holding this heavy stone right now. You know, sometimes when there are things that bother, when there are things that, you know, weigh me down, I just lift this stone as a symbolic act to say, Lord, this is one of the weight. This is really, you know, uh, weighing me down. When we actually do it symbolically and give it over to God, there's a release. Maybe you also need to do it. Find a you know, stone, something that's heavy. Lift it up and say, Lord, this is what's weighing me down today. This is the worry that's bothering me. This is the anxiety that's bothering me. Will he make the choice to give over that weight to God? Because he can handle it. He can. He can lift it. No matter how heavy it may be. Last week, when I was uh, going on my walk, I saw this stone. And I just sat on this stone, just a reminder. You know, if we are in Christ, the solid rock, we will not be shaken. And as Psalm is mentioned in Psalm 18 too, the Lord is my solid rock. My fortress, my rescuer, my God is my rock. I take refuge in him. He is my shield, my salvation strength, my place of safety. You know, when you sit on this rock, it does not move. It does not shake. Just that reminder, when we are in Christ, we are also in that place of solidity. We do not have to worry about what happens around because it does not shake. What about you this evening? Are you in Christ? Are you in him? என்று <laughs> Antidote for anxiety. Jesus is the antidote for anxiety. There's so much of confusion on the efficacy rate with the various vaccines. Shalika was determined that she only wanted a Pfizer vaccine. Because that's what everyone is saying. That's the good vaccine. But let me remind you, Jesus is the antidote for anxiety. And I can guarantee you that it's 100% efficacy rate. 100%. And there's absolutely no side effects. Will you turn to him? Will you allow him to lift all your anxieties? Will you allow him to lift all your burdens? In the Nalilam, Avaridam Ningal Povir Lanal, Mutru Murdaha, Murd Kavali Hill, Murd Vedani Hill, Manaklis and Lavatri Mavar. Today, you need to make the choice. Will you make the choice to go before him? And will you give over your worries, your anxieties? And he will lift it for you. May God bless you. And in closing, as we listen to this song, may we remind ourselves that we need him. That without him, we cannot live. We cannot get through this life. Lord, I need you.
God, how I need you. Lord Jesus, we came to this place this evening for a Zoom worship. Thank you for speaking to us. Some of us came to this place with broken hearts. But you have mended them. Others came depressed and you were their only hope. Father, you have shown yourself strong in their lives. And guide us as we conclude this service. Show us the right way to follow throughout the, the week. And when we come back, we shall testify the great things that you have done in our lives. வாழ்க்கையில் பெரிய காரியங்களை செய்தார் என்று நம்பிக்கையோடு சொல்லக்கூடிய சாட்சிகளாக எங்களை நீர் மாற்றி அமைத்தருள வேண்டும் என்று ஆண்டவராக இயேசுவின் நாமத்தில் ஜெபம் கேட்கிறோம் எங்கள் நல்ல பிதாவே ஆமேன் the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the fellowship of the holy spirit be with us all now and forevermore amen